in Ghana um, attending a funeral, but this is one of my sessions anyway. So it's actually worked out quite well because I've been, yeah, I'm doing my session. So there was meant to be a session on education and scholarships. And I think that was meant to take place either this week or the last session, but we're still trying to finalize the speakers for that one. And so we're thinking that one would be next week. So we look, and I think it, the way we've done it, I think actually works, it's actually a better structure because first we had the cultural capital and then we had the empowerment and today, we're going to look at employment and job preparedness and we're trying to get the speakers um ready for next week which i think is the 27th and that one is going to be on education and scholarships so i think the, this flow is actually better <laughs> it's amazing how mistakes actually turn out to be a good thing so all right so let me start sharing Okay, so can you see what, what can you see? Cultural capital for anti racism. Yep, and then employment and job preparedness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's just the one slide that you can see, right? Yes. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about employment and job preparedness which i think is really really important i have something in the chat let me see okay jemima jemima second one okay <laughs> um <laughs> we can help monitor the chat here for you okay thanks that'd be great and and is felicia here to help I perhaps with the notes she's gonna be a little bit late she has a standing meeting every uh saturday apparently so she's okay. gonna be logging in uh shortly here Okay, Carolyn, would you mind taking notes for me, please, whilst Ashley and 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 I can want the chat? No problem, I can do that. Okay, well, and and we're also re recording this, so we'll be able to refer back to it afterwards. So. Okay. okay great. great. So employment and job preparedness. I think that is. This was one of the topics that came from the SOS Congo team, and I think is crucially, crucially important for young people. And so I hope I do it justice. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get into ha quick housekeeping and then we can move. Okay, so I like to work with this model, which like I said to you the last time is a model around communication created by Tim Fox, who's the Vice President of Business Relations and Equity Strategy at Calgary Foundation. And I think I think everybody's here, but just for consistency, I'll just go through it really quickly. So we want to make sure that we are all present in this virtual space and with each other. I know that I really commend um, Jemima for coming in, even though she's at work, but for the rest of you who aren't at work, be present. And we are open to new ideas, ways of thinking and feedback. We listen deeply, are curious, and to seek new knowledges and understanding. Actually, who wants to read the next one? We bring awareness. Just unmute and speak. I'll pick someone. Apple. To turn the go and say hippity hop before we start. <laughs> hippity hop. We bring awareness to our biases, assumptions, and judgments. All right. Thank you, Afo. Yeah. Uh, we hold a, a space of trust and confidentiality. Yeah. Junior, are you here, Junior? Um, we focus on possibility and see obstacles as opportunities for learning. Okay. Who else is here? Christiana? Um, we acknowledge and appreciate each other's gifts, strengths, and contributions. Thank you. Lavi, please. We challenge ideas, uh, not people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pamela. I think we missed one. Yeah. We did? Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we hold brave space for courageous conversations. Okay. Papa and Dembe, would you mind doing us the honor, please, sir? 
So the, 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 the focus, okay. We acknowledge and appreciate each of the uh, each other's gifts, strength, and uh, contribution. Okay. Okay. But have we got any left? I think there's one or two left, right? So who's left? Raisa? <clears throat> We allow discomfort to lead our growth. Yeah. Cristiano, are you here? I think we have one last one. Okay. Are you here, Cristiano? Okay, Carolyn, can you do the honors of reading the last one? We take accountability for our own learning, knowledge extraction versus knowledge mobil uh, mobilization. All right. Okay. So let's get started. So before we jump in, um, let's look at you know the, the the learning goals for this session today. We're going to look at career skills, and when we talk about career skills, we're looking at things like communication and soft skills. We're looking at enhancing your professional development. We're looking at future-proofing the skills that you do have. And we're gonna look at the elevator pitch. That might either come immediately after or at the end. And then we'll look at job searching preparation. And oftentimes we talk about the employment, we talk about job searching preparation, but we don't often focus on actually, well, how do we keep a job? in the sense that so much of the work is, how do we get a job, how do we get a job, how do we get a job, how do we keep a job? And so here, right through, we're going to be talking about job preparation and also keeping a job. And so I'm gonna be highlighting some of the things that we need to not just get a job, but also keep a job, okay? Right, so let's get started. I always start off with a question. So what is your understanding of employment and job preparedness? When you see this, what comes to mind? Feel free to repeat anything I've said or add anything that you'd like to add. I see myself going on YouTube and watching videos how to um, <laughs> how to pass an interview, what questions do they ask, how to answer, and how to defend myself and everything. Okay, okay. All right, Christiana? Uh, for me, I saw it as like already being hired and understanding your job responsibilities, as well as uh, well, the skills that you need to accomplish your job tasks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Who else? I see it as like being eligible. It's almost like uh, getting in for a program at school or getting in for a project. Like you have to make sure um, uh, you're competitive with everybody else and that you meet all the requirements uh, to be able to uh, have a hope of getting a, a foot in the door. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so you're all correct. In this channel, so we have the condition of having paid work. So obviously understanding, just like Christiana said, what are your responsibilities and executing them well, um, preparing for the workforce or for the job, and how do you keep it? And how do you keep it? How do you grow? How do you elevate? How do you get promoted? So it's not just, okay, yeah, 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 let's work hard to get the job. But once you're in it, how do you succeed at it? And how do you sort of grow? How do you... Um, elevate how you get promotions and things like that, okay? And what would you say are some of the challenges? What do some of the challenges look like for people in general? And let's say black people or black youth in gaining employment and in being prepared for the workforce. What are some of the challenges we face? Complicated names on the resume. Oh, 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 sorry, is that Ike? Or was it someone else? I heard two voices. Um, I was talking, then I muted myself to let the other person go. I'm not sure who it was. Who was it? was it? me, but you can go. Oh, okay. Um, I said um, a 
names like complicated names on resume uh people kind of already know that you're black like maybe based upon some of the experience that you have volunteer wise so there's um, that first like um like just trying to pass that first kind of stage there uh sometimes yep. they can filter you out uh, due to those things yeah exactly yeah names what else i was gonna say stereotypes like for example that black people are always late or that they're less competent okay stereotypes okay so black people are late and they are less competent okay what else what are the challenges that we face i would say a uh, lack of adequate skill for certain jobs skills so what do you mean by skills um, Carol? um a lack of experience in getting those skills that are required for certain jobs so say all you've been doing is working in fast food and now you're done university and you want to go work in your field but all you've worked your whole entire time is is uh, is, is uh, in fast food and so there um there's a struggle in showing some transferable skills Right, right. So those transferable skills, right? Okay, okay. And is this for, let's say, a graduate or just anyone in general? I said that again. Is this for, let's say, a young person who's just graduated and let's say yeah. before they graduate? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Usually, a young person graduating or maybe pivoting field. Like if you're pivoting field as an older person, that mm -hmm. could be a challenge. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's take one more. Let's take one more. For me, before we even go further there, I appreciate what everyone said before me, but there's something I would like us to consider. Sure. The field of study, it goes hand in hand with what uh, my predecessor just said. She spoke uh, about skills, but I'd like to speak about the field of study, what you chose to study uh, at school. Does it uh, help you to get job in this current world you are living in? We need to be aware of our environment, what is relevant right now, and what am I going to study? For example, uh, um, years ago, philosophy was so famous. For you to be seen in the society, you need to be a philosopher. But right now, where are you going to go with the philosophy? <laughs> Unless you just become a teacher like me. <laughs> so know your environment, know the markets, know what is relevant and go for it. Don't contradict yourself. You go to study philosophy, but you want to become an IT. Don't, you don't want to top up your skills and, and so on. That's what I would like to add also. Uh, you know, that is spot on. Like I have a, a slide on that, which is future proofing yourself in the sense that, you know, you have to be really aware of the market to really understand what is going on before you actually choose, you know? So while some of us, like for me, I probably went down my route because my dad was like, this is really good. You should do it. You should do it. It will be good. But if you don't have one, there's two things that, that is required. You need that passion for it and you may not have it to begin with but read up on it youtube like we live in a world where the information is endless you literally have to stop the information and entering because everywhere you go that you're being bombarded with information but if there's something you like to do something you would like to get into really do your research and understand the market within which you're operating because even if you think about let's say the oil and gas sector whilst it's still to a degree thriving, to a degree, but in the next 30, 40, 50 years, it may be less because we're looking more at more renewable, more green technology and things like that. And we're finding that over the last five years, so many people in the oil and gas sector have lost their job in Alberta. And so they're now faced with having to reskill. And so not that I'm saying don't enter the oil and gas sector, but just like Lavi said, you need to really do your research into what field of study you want to enter into and understand the market and what it might look like in the future. What does the future look like and how can you basically future proof yourself for that? But even if in the unlikely event that you do all your research and in 20 years or 10 years, they don't need that skill, you have to be nimble. You have to be ready to sort of pivot and reskill and upskill. And we're moving into a world of now micro credentialing. Gone are the days where if you wanted to do marketing, you had to do a whole diploma on marketing or a whole degree on marketing. Now you can just go to all of these online schools, do two courses and you're good to go. And so, absolutely. Oh, this is really cool. One more, one more, one more, one more. Because I like to, when I understand the challenges and I'll make sure that I'm addressing them throughout the lecture or throughout the session, right? 
So one more, one more. What other challenges do we as either black people or young people or young people-ish face? <laughs> I don't know if I may say, I think of uh, the challenge of uh, coping with the culture of the, the, the organization or the, the enterprise that you, uh, you get in. Uh, sometimes is the conflict there, the culture, I don't know if you understand what I mean, the culture of the, the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Can you, would you mind giving us an example? So should anyone be a little unclear? Like I don't know if uh, I can, yeah, you you enter into an um, well, organization or you get a job, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you are in, but uh, I would say that you also lost because you found that, the way people do the things, uh, it seems like uh, there's an uh, underlying uh, cultures that you are, you you find yourself in uh, conflict with. Uh, then it takes you time. That means you are not really integrated in uh, in that kind of environment uh, environment that you're working with, and that brings you uh, frustration. Uh, Basically, because you don't know what kind of uh, how people really operate the things and as a whole, it's not that you don't know your job. You know your job, but there's a I don't say it's a philosophy for the way, but uh, there's always a culture uh, where the people uh, they, they make they come up with a, a way a style of doing things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to, okay, so if Papa is I would like to add on it to be a more practical, uh, an, an example. I, Maybe, yeah. As early as I, I got here, I, I was not waiting to get a blue collar job. I got a job in a road maintenance company, and uh, those are where industries where you need to be tough. You need to speak like them, you need to act like them. And mostly okay. would, would speak using the F words. I'm okay. a very serious person, logic person. So I did not go that route speaking the F thing. Give me that F thing, give me that F and so on. I did not speak it, I was very serious. I was not liked. Um, I did not fit in the environment because the boss was my friend from South Africa. He requested me that, man, I'm giving you four weeks to find another job because you are not fitting here. So it's either you fit in or you don't. For example, another the opposite, you come in an industry where people are serious, but you come like a, like, like a musician with your dreadlocks and your pants down there and so on. So that I think mm -hmm. to be a little bit practical, that's what Papa Ndeme is speaking I about. Think, I think, yeah, that you got, you got my mind. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you are absolutely correct. The, that culture aspect, you are absolutely correct. And this is sometimes, this is sometimes behind the reason but why they may be less, they be more, they'll be more reluctant to hire us and less reluctant to promote us. And so we have to now find a really, it's a very intricate dance that we have to do where in which we're still maintaining our authentic self but at the same time, we're taking steps to fit and integrate. I mean, there's even a study that was conducted that said that because of immigrants, let's say inability to fit in and network and this and that and the other, we're not promoted as much. And so we tend to be more qualified than our peers. Um, yeah, we tend to be more qualified than our peers, um, yeah. Yeah, more qualified than our peers. And so it's important, that culture piece is really important. Yeah. But Christiana about... raised your hand again. Okay, Christiana, last one. Okay, I just wanted to add one thing that I've read about, I think it was sometime last year, explaining that, especially within um, immigrant workers, some don't take the opportunity to move up the hierarchy. And so this ends up with us being more vulnerable to being furloughed or let go and, and for any other reason. So I guess if you're not considered um, 
for example, non-replaceable by the company that you work for, it's easier, it puts you in a position of vulnerability when it comes to keeping that job. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So these reasons are all great and they are practical and they're real. And these are things that I'm sure we have either all faced or will face. <laughs> and so in this session today, I'm wanting to sort of give us some tips and tricks and skills, you know, to sort of either avoid that from happening or these challenges becoming our reality or mitigating the impacts that it will have, okay? All right. Okay, so we've done that. And how do we, so quickly, how do we address those challenges? So we ha I have written here, name on resumes, stereotypes of let's say black people, um, lack of experience and transferable skills, field of study. So picking the right study, the right course, the right degree, the right um, um, training, culture. And so how do we address those challenges? Just I'll just maybe two or three answers. I just wanted to pipe in because uh, what Lavi said, I think that is something a lot of us black men face here. Uh, I remember my job in university, I had a job uh, with a friend at a place called like Gino Windows, like we're just working in the warehouse space in Calgary in general or, or any other job. It's, uh, it's really aggressive people come at you really aggressive and they ask you, give me this, give me that. And it's it's one of those vulnerable spaces, uh, especially for us, it, 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 it's a huge challenge because if you respond, you're the most aggressive. You know, even though it's so intense and it's bizarre, it's uh, uh, it's something that I felt, uh, what, what's the word there? Um, sorry, uh, the, 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 the word just escaped me, but something that I felt that I, I saw in other settings too, I thought that it would only be in those kind of aggressive warehouse settings, but it's almost the way like hazing happens here. It's like, they, like once you come in, they have to like tease you, mock you, do something. And like, you have to like laugh at it. And I'm not the one to laugh at that kind of stuff either. So a lot of times people just don't like me and I'd never know why I'm like I didn't do anything to you like I'm doing my job here but not understanding that cultural piece or how to fit in and how to do things like that is a huge challenge that I always face because I never want to be the clown I never want to be the one who you can just joke at or do those kind of things that and that seems to be one of the biggest ways that you fit in or or, or you have to kind of like take it so like that culture piece, yeah, we've all definitely tasted it. We used to call Gino uh, uh, the, the plantation. You'd get there and they'd separate you by like race. It'd be like the white people be the supervisors. Then there's like the Indian people who are like maybe like in between. And then there's like the Latinos and the blacks like at the bottom and the Latinos say, well, we're not black at all. So it's like black really, really towards the bottom, you know? So like they, you, you come into work, they take your stuff and like, how do you stand up for yourself? It was really um, uh, something that uh, for a lot of you guys entering the workforce are gonna be entering the workforce. It's really interesting, like that power dynamic or how people try to like flex or impose their power on you or somebody having a bad day somewhere else, like try to put that on you. Sorry, I will shut up. I know it's mostly for you guys. No, no that's, that's a good one. I mean, I mean I, if you could come up, Oh, sorry, Papa. sorry, Papa Ndembe. No, no, no. I was saying that that's really why I mentioned that the uh, the challenge of the culture you get in, and then maybe to answer your question, uh, you you ask how we 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 cope with those challenges or how we. I think the first thing I would have um, I would like to share or to say here that. Um, uh, we should be uh, maybe remain students of um, of uh, culture of learning, and uh, we should be we should develop this kind of skill of um, uh, observing where you are. Um, I mean, observe and learn so that you can know what to do. Uh, uh, re, I would say remain students of culture, if, if I can may 
I may say this, because there are cultures, you know, only one culture. So uh, still learn how people do the things and how, what they do, and then know how you can enter in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Remain students of culture. Remember, even in our last session, we spoke about empowerment, and there were three key components. One, you have to have that self-empowerment, and that would involve, obviously, you know, one, there's a systemic part of the system and um, addressing systemic issues but also the internal issues and so yes. you are confident sure. in yourself if you are you have that confidence in yourself and you're empowered in yourself even if you do get to encounter those kind of of of, 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 of let's say jobs you're almost creating an, a, an armor around yourself that is more difficult to penetrate because even i know people who let's say have worked in the rigs and and they have to really sort of fix their mindset because in, if you don't fix your mindset, you will come out just like um um um. I was about to say just like I can say, <laughs> you'll come out being more aggressive. You'll come out being more, you know, just sort of not more aggressive, and you know, and that sort of thing. You either become extremely meek or aggressive because you they're taking advantage, or you're aggressive. You're like, I'm not going to take this, so I'm going to give them pound for pound. And so it's really important for you to have that self-confidence and be, have that self-empowerment. And of course, and, you know, explore your environment, explore your environment. And I like what Pepe and Demo said, that you are really a permanent student of culture. I like that. One last one, and then we'll move on. How do we address uh, I think one thing, uh, it comes back to what we are saying last session in that, uh, having that community, that network of support as well. I think that's a very big thing because we, we talked a lot about like, uh, like Carol was saying about the, the, the necessary, necessary skills and all that, or like, or what Levy was saying about the, about like what field to go into and like having that network of people that can support you gives you their input as well is a very big thing Correct. in terms of knowing which what's, what's a good way, to, what, good route to go. Correct, absolutely, you're correct. And you know what the interesting thing is? if you have the right networks and you have the people who like you where you are, you can be yourself 100%. But if you're in an environment where they're like, oh, I don't know this person, then it's a little bit more challenging. And so just like I was saying is really putting yourself. So part of that is also, because I know sometimes, you know, we make decisions as black people, you know, to take these kind of jobs because obviously there's a financial need for us to do it. But if there isn't that absolute financial need to do, then I would not even suggest it because it will really not, it's not good for your mindset. But obviously if that financial need is there, then you got to do what you got to do. You just have to make sure you just empower yourself and strengthen your mind so that you can withstand and do what needs to be due for that period of time. Okay. But today, thank you. Thank you, Afo. Thank you, Ike. Thank you, Papa Ndembe. Thank you, Lavi. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and so today we're really going to be looking at this whole idea around employment and job preparedness from an empowered perspective, in the sense that we already know what the challenges are. And we're going to be find, we're looking at strategies to overcome them and for them not to sort of take take prominence in our mind instead we're empowered and we're looking at what can we do to fix what can we do to address this is our goal and how do we bridge the gap between right now and where we intend to be okay and okay so the first thing that we're going to be looking at what do employers look for in a candidate from the real from the fast food to the um, nonprofits to the for profits, what do they look for in a candidate? What is that one thing that is pervasive right through? You mean in terms of soft skills? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Pamela, you your hand. Oh, sorry, sorry, lady. Go ahead, ladies first, please. Pamela? <laughs> I would say enunciation with your words because they don't really want people who can't speak English that well or can't communicate with customers. Okay. Okay, so communication. 
Okay. All right. Yes. Um, Lavi. Thank you. I wanted to address it in terms of people's uh, people's person, which will cover so many things because um, I do not disagree with Pamela. But um, there are some people who are well spoken, but they are not people's people or people's person. They fall they, they fall short. So being people's person, that means you will have your heart under your feet, if I can use that word. You know how to address each one uh, concerns accordingly. You are approachable. You know also how to approach people and so on. That's the key things on top of which uh, so many will act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So employers, of course, the obvious, you know, they want the skills, they want the qualifications, they want the competence, but they also want soft skills. And many people would struggle to find a work in the field. And this translates to, you don't have the soft skills that we're looking for. So yes. the skills, oh. Sorry, what? um, Christiana just added, um, oh, sorry, where did it go? Interpersonal. Skills. Interpersonal skills and a team player. Interpersonal skills, team player, absolutely. The skills, we can achieve them. Black people, we're renowned for our achievements. And our many, many degrees and trainings and this and that and that and that and the other, you often find a lot of black people who are in positions that they are way overqualified for, way overqualified for their peers who are at this exact same level will have considerably less experience, considerably less qualifications. And so for me, skills, qualifications and competence is not something I think we lack. I think it's something we have in spades. And even if we don't have it, we have the ability to get it. But soft skills, what is your understanding of soft skills? I think it's related to what we've already been talking about, but what is your understanding of soft skills? So soft skills, they're the social skills and personality traits that help you to interact with others and succeed in the workplace. So in contrast to, let's say, technical skills, soft skills about how you work rather than what you do. And mm -hmm. it's all about effective communication skills. It's really at the heart of that. So good communication good skills. Oh, sorry, Papa and Demi, you want to say something? No, no, I'm just saying exact, exact. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so good communication really forms a foundation of many other um, sought after skills. So what are some examples of some soft skills that employers are looking for right across the board? I think we've mentioned some already, but any that we haven't mentioned? Uh, being agreeable, like would that be a kind of soft skill? What do you mean? Not that I disagree, I just want you to unpack it a little bit. What do you mean by agreeable? Um, I'm just connecting it maybe to some of the stuff we were talking about before. Uh, and connecting it to like what like Lavi is saying, like uh, maybe uh, not being somebody who's gonna come in and dominate other people. I think um, in terms of soft skills, I feel like that's something for us Africans or black people in general, black men maybe, that um, um, uh, we discuss amongst ourselves. So making sure that you're in that space between empowered and meek, not too close to empowered, uh, uh, somebody who can take direction, somebody who will just listen, not rock the, the boat too, too much. Like that's what I was thinking more with agreeable, but I'm not at all sure if that's in line with the soft okay. skills. Okay. And Raisa okay. raised her hand. So, so soft skills, for me, I don't think it's about not rocking the boat. It's all about how. So you can rock the boat, but it's how. I mean, for example, I was part of a, a, a organizing a conference with supposedly woke people. And at the heart of the conference was diversity, equity, inclusion. That was the heart of it. And I could tell, I could see the apprehension when I came in and that they felt that I would be that angry black woman that was there to shake, every, shake everybody up and defend everything and argue with everyone. And there are many ways to skin a cat. That might be someone. That might be someone's um, idea, but that's not the only way to move the needle and to get things to change. 
And so we cannot all do the one thing. We need a plethora of people doing different things. And that is what helps to push the needle along. But um, yes, sorry, Raisa. And then um, Pamela. Uh, I don't know if, if it's on the list, but I think uh, problem solving and creativity can be one. They yes. uh, mm -hmm. manage look for people who are people who create who create ideas who will add on who will add something to the company and not just you're not just there to just work you're also there to learn and create and everything so yeah correct problem solving there is no job that doesn't require problem solvers the one thing that people hate and even me when I work with people so I'm like oh there's a problem I'm like yeah okay how do we fix it and so problem solvers, being able to sort of understand how do we solve problems and sort of taking on problems head on, even if you're working at McDonald's, there are going to be problems that might occur. You know, there might be a situation, maybe the, 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 the smoothie machine breaks down. Are you going to be like, smoothie machine's down? And that's it. You're like, okay, well, how do we fix it? Let's get in the, 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 the technician in. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do the other. And one, two hours later, the machine is up and running. <coughs> as opposed to waiting three days for someone to call and that sort of thing. So problem solving. Creativity, you're absolutely important in that we used to be like, okay, well, we have to think out, you know, we have to think outside the box. And I say, throw away the box. There's no box. There is no box <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> there is no box. And let's just be creative and innovative and think of new ideas and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would like to give an example here. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, very often I, I receive calls. I mean, people call me. I think they're doing promotion or things, you know, with the way they work. But what they do, they will call my number and they don't say anything. And then they expect me to, to talk. No, I will not talk. You call me tell me I'm so-and-so, and what is what I want to do, then I will respond to you. Yeah. So it went on off and went on another time. I knew that it was coming from uh, uh, Telos and whatever that is in. And then I, I, I talked to somebody, why do you call and they don't talk or expect me to? So I lecture them on that. I said, you cannot do that to me. I know what you're doing. So you have to talk to, so that I can talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, to me, that is, uh, they're doing promotion, but it's a lack of uh, soft skill, uh, skills out there. They, right. they don't have it uh, right there. Right. So that is an example. And I will say courtesy, um, it, it is a, a, an aspect of um, soft skills. Right. You're correct. You're correct. You're correct. And thank you, Papandam. And you know what? Gone are the days where you can go to your job nine to five and that's it and you know you just pen pushing and go for it. you know now and the thing with black people is we're gonna stand out in fact we stand out unless you work for let's say la vie you may have the privilege of working in an immigrant serving agency so he might not be the only black person but oftentimes we find ourselves in an environment where we may be the only black person or few black people and so we are going to stand out so we have to stand out for good we have to stand up for good as opposed to stand up for bad. So if you're known to be that person who is problem solving, you're known to be that person who has great, you're going to stand out. So whatever you do is going to stand out. So if you, let's say, come in late and let's say a whole bunch of people, white people come in late, they won't see that, but they'll see yours because you're going to stand out. If you take a few days off, you have a few sick days off, and a whole bunch of white people have a few sick days off, they won't see it, but they will see yours. And so you need to be able, so you're gonna stand out anyway, so stand out for good. And when you at work, don't see it as a chore, even if it's not something you wanna be in, but just take it, say, I'm, wherever I find myself, I'm going to do the absolute best and it's going to be a learning experience. And so that problem solving piece, if you get renowned, if you get known to be that problem solving person and that person who, who is um, 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 creative and you have a, a boss who cares about productivity, 
you're going to see yourself getting promoted because people are like, well, look at you white people. The black person is coming, they're problem solving, they have all the skills. I have confidence in their work, okay? But this isn't guaranteed. So we're gonna talk about other ways as well. But yeah, so those soft skills, and here are some examples. So communication, teamwork, adaptability, in the sense that, okay, something changes, you're able to adapt, you're able to pivot, you know, like, oh my God, it's a pandemic and everything is crazy. You're like, okay, it's a pandemic, that's fine. What do I need to do? I need to adapt, I need to shift. Okay, fine, I've lost my job in oil and gas. What can I do? How can I reskill? Problem solving, creativity. So you guys all, you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. And what about online soft skills? What are the online soft skills? Because now we're all online. What are some of the online soft skills? How do you conduct your online businesses? or on online meetings and stuff like that. Yes, Christiana, thank you. Um, I would say one thing that we kind of some have forgot to pay attention to and that many companies do look for is basic etiquette. So I think people kind of think that because they're behind a screen that they can look more relaxed, maybe look less professional and do things that they normally would not do um, at the workplace. But what they're looking for people who still keep their composure even behind the screen. So you don't come in with, I don't know, only like you no know, pants or you're seen drinking or eating on screen or I don't know, doing something else, maybe on your phone while people are talking, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Online soft skills. Sorry, people, <laughs> putting on your cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, like Christiana has obviously said is, is yeah, that etiquette, you know, and it's important, like, you know, looking at the screen and that sort of thing. And, and that's important to us like when you're at work. And, you know, interestingly, when I teach, you know, I have students who will just send me an email. Hey, I'm like, hey, who? <laughs> good, how does, good morning, good afternoon. And that sort of thing. And again, as a black person, you are going to stand out. If you are that person who's like, hey, they're going to be like, she's so rude. They might ignore the white people. And so as a black person, you need to make sure that you have that etiquette and you're like, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I was speaking with somebody yesterday, one of my clients, and she was telling me how she loves the Nigerians because the Nigerians are so polite and so this and so that and so the other. So she, in her mind, would most likely, she wouldn't have a problem hiring a Nigerian because in her mind, they're extremely polite. And I, so I agree with you, Kathy. That whole um, even sent, even in text messages, like there's such a lack of etiquette now. It's just hey, like, no good morning, no good evening, and you know I think we've we've moved um, that whole uh, very relaxed um, that very relaxed uh, way of doing things on text messages to emails as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. And, and that's sorry, um, Jamima said in the chat, understanding empathy um like for people that don't have the same computer skills and stuff like that yeah absolutely absolutely yeah understanding and empathy correct yeah yeah and you're correct there carolyn you're correct and again you are going to stand out so you have to make sure that whatever you do you are standing out for good and not for bad the unfortunate the unfortunate reality is that as a black person you have to be on point as often as possible, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, on, so other things, interpersonal skills, relationship building skills, teamwork, collaboration, conflict resolution. So if there is a conflict, how are you going to resolve it? Are you going to exacerbate it? And just like I said, as a black man, if you find yourself in a conflict, it might not be your fault at all, but you will be seen as, what's the word? Contentious, the problem. And so you have to really think about your conflict resolution skill, but it's not, that doesn't mean you are going to, like Lavi said, put your heart under your foot you have to, you know, there is still, you can still 
have good conflict resolution skills without putting your heart under your foot and having people stamp all over you. Okay? Yeah. I think on, on that point, one thing that I will advise is that is to, uh, for us, myself also, is to learn how to master our feelings. Uh, we tend sometimes to be guided by the feelings. Mm. Feelings which is good. And I see that even in the church and everywhere, you know, uh, people, they go more of the feelings, but not with the reason of it, they don't think. So we need to try to learn, master our feelings, because that in that time in a problem solving, if you are above of your feelings, then you master the whole situation. Then then we can go uh, in, a, in a way that everybody will appreciate and will accept you. But if you go, you follow your feelings, you might be not uh, doing a good, uh, do a good job. Yeah. One hundred percent. I couldn't agree more, Papa Ndembe. I couldn't agree more. In that, we face perhaps more challenges than the average folk. And so we are already walking into a room bruised. And so it can be difficult for us to separate our emotions from, in, let's say, in a conflict or so, you know, and you're absolutely correct in that we have to really try and take ourselves out of it, take our emotions out of it. And it's not easy. It really isn't easy, but it's a practice that if you keep practic pra practicing it over and over and over again, you'll be able to master it more and more and more. You have to be able to take yourself out of it because if you're making decisions based on emotion, they, may, they are most likely not going to be optimal. So if you take the emotions and feelings out of it, you're more likely to make more practical, objective decisions and deal with the conflict in a more objective manner. So I agree with you, Papandemic, 100%. And so therefore, as we can see here, you know, at the heart of these soft skills is really how we work on our own and how we work with others. So working, with our, working on our own is okay, thinking out of the box, like I said, there's no box, you know, being more creative, being pro problem solvers and working others is all, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the you know, teamwork and collaboration and that sort of thing. And so at the heart of that is all about communication. So let's unpack this communication a little bit. So how do we communicate? So here we have a bit of a, a chronological account of how we, how we communicate. So traditionally it was these phone calls, letters, personal notes, okay? Baby boomers, phone calls, face-to-face, -face, emails, Gen X. We are here. <laughs> um, Gen X, voicemail, text, email. It doesn't mean yeah, um, millennials, instant messaging, text, email. Gen Zs, FaceTime, text, face-to-face. -face. It doesn't mean that we don't do personal notes anymore. It's just sort of looking at where the focus is in terms of communication. And I guess I'm trying to create some visuals as well for you. And so with that said, how do we communicate? We see all of these things here, phone calls, letters, personal notes, voicemails, texts, but let's dig deeper, dig deeper. How do we communicate? What is communic these are communication tools. What does communication actually involve? our voice, we speak. So when we speak, you know, we, you know, we have our voice. So we have to be, so the content of what we're saying is important. Our tone. Oh, tone. oh yeah. <laughs> Shana, you want to do the lecture? <laughs> yeah, our tone is important. You know, and that you can have two people say the exact same thing and one person's tone is off and the delivery and what the other person receives is completely different. And your experience and feeling with that person is completely different. You know, you'll have some people say, I met her, I don't know what it is. I just don't like them. And oftentimes it may not be that what they're saying is wrong or is off or is offensive, but it's the other 
communication cues that they're picking up from that person. And we do that too sometimes. I don't know what it is. Something's off. And so how else, what else should we be mindful of as we communicate? So we have the voice. So we've got looking at the tone. What else do we, yeah, do we do when we communicate? For me, it's always been, anyone who knows me here will agree. It's always been facial expressions. I can't hide what I'm thinking yeah. <laughs> very well yeah. on my face. And yeah, that's yes, uh, yes. something yeah. I've definitely had to work on in the uh, work, in, work environment. Facial expression. Yes, Ashley's very guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone knows that about <laughs> rolling my eyes, all that kind of stuff. Well, the, and you know, it's so just I have it there facial expressions, rolling eyes in my notes. Yeah, correct. Facial expressions. And I yeah. think with people, we're actually, we, 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 we kind, of, um, kind of wear our, our feelings on our face. Yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> Well, some um, more than others, of course, but yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Junior also added here in the chat, wording. Wording. Yes, Junior, can you elaborate what you mean by wording? Um, Like the different way people choose to say things. Like you can uh, give like, for example, like uh, constructive criticism, right? Like you can say, maybe you should have done this, or but you, then you can also like, you know, scream at them and say like, or why didn't you do this and this, you know, like just the way you say it. Correct. Your words are also very, 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 very important. And you can add or take out one word that could make a difference completely to how the other person receives it. Yeah, wording is important. So your voice, the words that you actually use, your facial expressions, even your hand gestures, your posture. If let's say you're talking to your boss and you're like this, I mean, I do that in meetings, but that's because my boss and I are friends. But <laughs> but if we weren't, you know, if you are in a serious meeting or whatever, and you are your posture is, you know what I mean? That's also important. If you're speaking with someone and it's important, even we'll talk about that shortly, but even if you're having like online meetings, you don't look at the screen you look directly at the camera because if you look at the screen it would look like your attention is off mm -hmm. so if you just look directly at the camera then it looks like okay i'm looking at you directly mm -hmm. and so yeah and so your posture all these things okay. go beyond what you say right you catch I mean, it. yes sir yeah i just wanted to ask a, a quick quick question here see if anybody okay. else is getting uh the similar vibe i'm feeling um, so I've just had, um, I, I guess I've been fortunate to uh, see um, uh, these types of discussion happen in other kind of cultural groups, like specifically for me, I've seen like Asian and indigenous kind of communities discuss this. And something I'm noticing with the way we're talking about our communication style is I want to ask the group, are we apologetic as Black people? Are we apologizing uh, uh, perhaps for our mannerisms and how we present ourselves and trying to um, fit kind of a norm here? Or is there a space for that, um, a cultural expression as well? I wanted to see what maybe the group thought about that because in the indigenous space, when I, I talk about this with the youth, they are very uh, 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 gung-ho, even about being late. They say, no, your culture has its own problems. You guys do your own thing. Us, we're late. It comes from a different context, a different understanding. You have to accept us. You know, they, they, they fight for their place, whether it's skills, whether it's a lot of things. They say, no, there's indigenous ways of knowing that we bring to the table that you perhaps don't. And I, I, I wonder if, uh, if, if us as a community, we have that same like spunk, that same like pizzazz, or, or, or maybe it comes across in different ways. Ashley's shaking her head at me right now. So maybe we can have a, a whole bunch of different uh, perspectives. That's a really, really good question. Yeah, Afo and then Christiana. Yeah, like now, the, like now that you're mentioning that, like I know I've definitely seen the, 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 the aspect of people like even in like black community, like I get being in Congo where like, no, this is our way. This is how we do things. We're not going to do it like uh, like the others. But I also see like a lot how we always say uh, we as black we have to work twice as hard for everything, and that's a lot. It comes down to a lot of like we're trying to adapt and making and try to present itself properly to 
those in, in power. Mm -hmm. So like, there is a lot, we do that a lot of like trying to like mold ourselves to like fit whatever, mm -hmm. whatever their, their uh, model is, whatever their, their uh, perspective is on how things should be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christiana, well, Alan. Oh, sorry about Wendy. No, I I see I see the problem here. There, and uh, it is. Uh, I will say that uh, you should not. We should not stand in that position that uh, we are like. Um, yes, we have been treated that. Uh, I mean, it's good to uh, acknowledge uh, acknowledge uh, acknowledge that uh, that's the way we have been uh, treated. Because if you don't see the uh, accept the problem, you won't give a, a, a right answer to the to the problem. Mm -hmm. So now that we've acknowledged that is the way, how we should uh, uh, give a solution, I mean, mm -hmm. to the problem, uh, is, is to remain in the state that we've been treated or to come out of that uh, uh, the statement. And how then we come out is a very, very important um, aspect that the I can tell as they are raising. But I will say this, that uh, as much as we know that that's the way, we don't uh, fight in, um, even when I hear that you have to work uh, twice as much, as uh, I think is also, is, is depressive. I mean, it is giving a kind of, uh, well, no. Um, first, we accept ourselves but uh, we need also to know that we have a, a personality, but how then we, we, let, we, we get to, to know it is also to accept that others also they have uh, uh, personalities or what, or the way of doing things. And then we come to slowly by slowly, I think as now, you use not speak the language they speak now. I mean, um, the, 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 their language. Now you are speaking their language. That means that you are also uh, integrated in that culture mm -hmm. where you can have a good discussion, understanding discuss a discussion because the language was a barrier, I would say. Mm -hmm. But will I say it is still a barrier now? I know. Now I think it is the way of thinking. Papa Ndembe, uh, I think... Yes? Uh, no, we get your point really well, but I think in the chat here, like Lati said, I think I might've opened a can of worms. There's a few people who are looking to respond. So maybe we'll do a quick, quick round here yeah, to, quick, to, get, quick. To, to get all of the responses in so that I don't uh, hold up and catch you too long with her presentation. I feel bad. But I think uh, we had Christiana who was gonna go next. We have Mama Parol. And then in the chat, uh, I will add some of the chat things after they speak. Okay. And then hopefully we can move on. I, I, do, I, I do apologize. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's a really good question. Okay. And sorry, Christiana. It's a, I think it's a very, very good question. And for me, the way I see it, I think it really depends on your perspective and really how you view the world, right? And what you deem as a priority. So for example, if your priority is I want to maintain my culture, I don't want to assimilate, I don't want to integ integrate, irrespect you know if that comes at the cost of let's say me having a job blah 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 go right ahead if but. your if your perspective is i don't care all i want is a job i want to succeed i want to get up there i want to then you do whatever you need to do but for me i think it's somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. in the sense, i don't mm -hmm. see why you need to give up a bit of yourself in order mm -hmm. to get ahead i mean i can understand i mean even the other day i was doing a a, a proposal it was a nonprofit. It was for a social community project. I also do economics. I was like, mm, economics is not valid in this position. Let me take it out. When I'm doing economics, I know if they see too much social, they'd be like, okay, we need somebody who is an economics strong person. I take out the social. And so it's knowing, like mm -hmm. Greg mm -hmm. said, knowing what your cultural capital is and knowing when to use what, when, and where, as opposed to saying that I am going to, I have to, let's say, um, have my heart under my feet, or as opposed to, um, 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 yeah, for you feeling that you have to give up some of yourself. Unfortunately, you may have to, in the sense that if you think, okay, as an African, we're late, and you have a job interview and you're late, you won't get it. 
that. It's just simple as that. And if you'd rather sort of maintain your Africanness and say, okay, we're being African, you know, is I don't think it is personally, but if that's a belief that you have, in every decision one makes, there are pros and cons. So being aware of what the pros and cons are and being able to accept what those cons are, then you're good. Okay, sorry, Christiana and then Carolyn. Um, I guess in response to Ike's question, I would say that from what I've seen, especially in Gen Z, we're a bit, we definitely have that spunk and sometimes to our own detriment. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I do sometimes see people who uh, just lead too much of the heart at the expense of strategy and at the expense of being coachable because they always come off of defensive. That's just what I've seen sometimes. And it's like, we've, we're quickly, we're, we're quick to kind of uh, be sensitive to any kind of reproach. And we come off as sometimes as being, okay, you're too reactive, you're too, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're just too much for us to handle sometimes. Like I've definitely seen that. I think our generation is very much into, uh, is more action-based rather than being solution like you know more action oriented rather than being solution oriented and so we're kind of quick to kind of talk back quick to kind of take offense quick to you know be very reactive without thinking of okay well what is the long-term goal long-term solution and what can actually depend about the problem without actually jumping at someone's throat that's just what i've seen personally like we I'm have a spunk but to our own detriment so often especially if you compare us to the asian canadian community who's a lot more like thinking long-term and like more willing to kind of mold themselves into what they need to be for long-term success. I, I, I think that's really interesting what you're saying there in that we need to know what the long-term goal is. If your long-term goal is, I want to maintain my culture. I want to make sure that all Africans maintain their culture, then that's a road that you're traveling. If your long-term goal is, I have kids, I want my kids to be successful, blah, 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 da, 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 that's another road that you're traveling. It doesn't mean that the roads might not intersect, but everybody's journey is not the same. And we can't judge the other person, uh, the other person's um, um, journey because they need to do whatever they need to do for survival. Really, it is kind of all about survival and thriving. Um, um, there was something I want to say, but I forgot. Carolyn, Carolyn. Hey, um, oh, I really like what Christiana had to say. I think uh, that's very valuable. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say was um, in terms of uh, knowing, referring to people properly. Um, and what I mean by that, I'll give an example. Uh, when I was at the UFC, you know, the UFC, is, it, it's a, more of a very serious place. You're, you're calling your professor doctor whatever and and not then i anymore. went to ambrose <laughs> okay so not anymore but before it was like that and then you go to ambrose and it's very personal you're calling your professors by their first name and um and so just understanding your audience and knowing and referring to people properly mm -hmm. um in is, is the skill to have in in the workplace because you could refer to someone in, in, in a manner that is detrimental to your job, to whatever you're doing. So just uh, referring to people in, in, in the right way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that. I like that, Carolyn. And you know what? Let's look at the Chinese. Mm -hmm. They maintain their culture. I mean, of course, they're, I mean, this is a rule, but there are always going to be exceptions to the rule. So I don't want to say, well, I know a Chinese person who hasn't, but for the most part, they maintain their culture. They eat the Chinese food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and if you have, I went to, I remember once I went to a, a, a healthcare place and there was a Chinese manager. Everybody else in that healthcare place was Chinese. They hired, everybody else was Chinese. We will, we as black people, we'll be like, oh, I don't want them to think that way. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to this. We're like, yeah. okay, maybe I'll sprinkle in a couple of white people. Yeah. Whereas the Chinese people, like, I don't, they hide yeah. every yeah. person in there was Chinese. You look at the, the, the let's say, the, the Indians or the Pakistanis, for example, they live in multi, multi um, generational homes. You have mm -hmm. grandma and they respect them. The hierarchy is there. They maintain their culture, they eat their food. You know, it's so funny, like, you know, like my friends and I always laugh at each other. You know, when I go near them, like, oh, what did you eat for lunch today? And I'm like, 
what did you eat for lunch today? <laughs> and that sort of thing. And, and, and yeah. And so they maintain their culture. And of course there has, the, there is a degree of some sort of integration that needs to occur. And, and, you know, but I, I like, I like Ike's question. Can I get uh, um, some points from the chat really quick no. before, uh, before we move on? Yeah. Um, so Jamima said, uh, I 100% agree, but I also feel like that was more our parents' generation. I think our generation is trying to take back what was taken from our parents and we learn to put our foot down, uh, if that makes sense. And I think this is a good, I think it gives us like um, a broader spectrum to kind of work with here because Christiana was in that space of like, like we react perhaps too much and maybe don't think long-term, but this is a discussion I have with my dad when he questions our strategies as a, as, as a generation. I go, but what did your generation do? You guys integrated yourselves, you went to school, you got all these doctorate degrees, but for what? You know, like there was a time when, when we uh, pursued that, but I don't think it, 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 it perhaps um, provided that change that we were hoping for. This is something if you guys in the group were at the discussion we had on post-colonialism, and then we discussed, uh, did we get integrated into a system that perhaps we shouldn't have gotten integrated in? So that can be a huge discussion moving forward, but I, I think uh, it's good for us to uh, 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 definitely get all these perspectives down and hear uh, definitely yeah. from different cultures and stuff. Ashley, yeah. I think you wanted to it's start okay. to It's okay, I'll, I'll leave my point because I think uh, it's kind of on, on the verge of not being, <laughs> we kind of moved away from what we were talking about before where I had my so it's okay so, but, yeah. but me personally i wanted to add like what you're saying about the, the blackness thing is is so true i remember i worked at bell and like for some odd reason everybody was black you know there was and like it was congolese haitian like we were all black minus one white girl and we had the store in the south and so when people would walk in they'd be shocked and they'd wait okay somebody else come can some and then a black person would keep coming from in front from the back we would play this for maybe like six months until they had to do something about it like literally they transferred people around they did an investigation on us to see if we were giving away things if we were selling things too much they banned us from playing basketball on the tv because it said it wasn't culturally a lot of money but the white people watch hockey like what's the difference oh no 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 basketball makes people feel uncomfortable. So I don't even know if black people are at the space where we would feel comfortable to just take that ownership yet. It's, uh, it's still a little bit different for us. Yeah, for me, I, I completely agree with you, which is what I was saying earlier, that we're going to stand out. The things we will do exactly the same thing as a white person, but ours will be deemed as inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be able to, to, to figure out what that line is that we're willing to walk. You know, I mean, for example, anywhere I go, when they say, well, I get you where you're from, and I give them my story from where I'm from, I'm Sierra Leone, I fled the war, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Even in my classes, when I start teaching, I'm from Sierra Leone, I fled the war, blah, 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 blah. And so your first encounter with me before doing, let's say, like elaborate introductions is always going to be, I'm from Sierra Leone. So you know straight away where I'm from. So there's no reason, well, there is some reason, but we have to hold on we have to hold on to our culture because we have you know things we have to pass on to our kids our nieces our nephews etc cetera, etc cetera. but then we have to make the decision as to what are we go how are we going to 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 assimilate to a degree how are we going to integrate because being late it's not going to get you the job it's not <laughs> and, look, and you'll probably get fired and then you will you, you know what i mean and so we have we there is it is whilst it's important push back but like Papa and Demma says you have to there's wisdom in Papa and Demma like there's a saying in Sierra Leone I think it's a, a global saying it says that which an elder person can see sitting down a young person can't see standing up so there's a lot of wisdom in what Papa and Demma is saying is that we have to take the emotion out of it because if we take the emotion out of it then we're able to navigate clearer as opposed to when we we, 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 we function with our emotion at the forefront of our our decision making and we have to do it with with empower with an empowered perspective right mm -hmm. so 
Okay, any last thoughts? I think I'm really curious to hear what Ashley had to say. I'm sorry, Ashley. <laughs> oh, I had a, I had um I had a, like two quick things to say. Like for me, um before I married Ike, like my, my last name was Hayes Sparks. And so people, you know, I had in my resume and they wouldn't know I was black until I showed up. And it was always a thing of like they physically or like, you know, you could see them be kind of being taken aback or being shocked. But I found that it actually worked in my favor um, in a way because it was like they're hiring the black girl, but the black girl who's like grew up here and is like pretty whitenized, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, it was always kind of like, oh good, this is the black girl that we want to hire because she talks, she doesn't have an accent. She's not a black girl. girl. She, yeah. And then I was going to say, um, my, my friend at work, she got into a, um, they were talking, I don't know how the conversation came up, but they're talking about bears somehow. And um, her boss, like she's black, obviously. And she was talking to all of her white colleagues, her boss, who's white. And um, her boss called her like a, a, oh no, the black bears, like they're talking about bears, I don't know. Black bears are the most vicious bears. Um, Evelyn, you're like a black bear. And like, <gasps> yeah, like, and then she like, you know, <laughs> for me, I wanted to react right away. I was like, go to the manager, like go to like do all this stuff. And she's like, no, like, I don't want to like rile everything up. And I'm like, no, this is really not okay. Like they're, they're like, and then she tried to like, cover it up by saying oh no you're just like a mama bear you know you just take care of your kids and you just like all this kind of stuff to like cover it up but it was really like not okay and like but like going back to Christiana's point like she felt like you know is this if I react like this is this really going to be better for me in the long run even though it wasn't a fair thing um you know we there's something that like she chose to consider me I would have like gone and let the place on fire but that's just me <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but yeah. it, it's a real issue that we face. And it's a real dilemma that we face in that if you have confidence in the system, you will have confidence that if I go and report, something will be done about it. Mm -hmm. And if, but if you don't have confidence in the system and you have a mortgage mm -hmm. to pay, you have school fees, you have this, you have that, you have the mm -hmm. other, you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And, you know, and it takes a lot of bravery, you know, and so I commend people who can and who do that. And, 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 and it's important to do that. And the question is though, is how? Mm -hmm. And there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. I mean, which is why I'm so looking forward to, to our session on advocacy, because that's going yes. to talk to us about how we can advocate yes. for ourselves. What are the different ways in which we can advocate for ourselves and not just sit back and take it because you're scared of losing your job? Mm -hmm. Because we have to be able to advocate because if you don't advocate, then the system will remain broken and it won't change. But of course, our priority oftentimes is number one. Your priority is your shelter, your basic needs, your how you know what I mean? And so if you feel that some action you're going to take will be at the expense of your basic needs, not everybody will take that action, which is why we need to know how to effectively advocate for ourselves so that it's not one or the other. And oftentimes it's not one or the other. Okay. And so um, um, there was something I was going to say. And one thing we also have to consider is that there are the many ways to skin a cat, advocacy, you know, we have to know how to advocate for ourselves, but it's also important to get in the door. Yes. It's important to get your foot in the door. I'm also really looking forward to your session with Sam, who is the VP at BMO. And he will, he will tell you about his experience. You know, and you can ask him, did you face this? Did you face that? How do you do this? How do you deal with that? And he'll be able to tell you how he has navigated that. And so now he can stand and guess what? What he says right now goes. But when he started off as just, let's say, a, back, a teller, no one would listen to him. No, not that I'm saying you don't do anything, you know, at your level. But it's important to also see, like Christian saying, the bigger picture. Right now, whatever Sam says goes, everybody listens to him. He has a project that he wants to do, a black project, you know, that supports black youth, it goes. And so it's important to also think 
you know, and we cannot all think mm -hmm. in exactly the same way. Some people are mm -hmm. sort of future minded and they will think long term. Other people are like, well, we need to deal with it right now. And we need soldiers at every step of the way. You can't have soldiers all focused long in the future. Soldiers all focused right now. We need soldiers at every step of the battle. And so wherever you feel that your battle is, you fight. Wherever you, and, and, and that's it. As opposed to saying, well, we, you didn't do this or you did, maybe that person has a different goal. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, okay, moving on. I'm going to have to cram everything in now <laughs> and maybe do some cuts, shot cuts. But I think this was a very, very important decision. I think it was a really important decision. So, okay, let me take a swig of my tea. Sorry, Christiane, I know you said we shouldn't be drinking. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Okay. Okay. So soft skills, of course, are something that can be gained daily in everything that we do. You can develop your communication and soft skills by interacting with people. Volunteering is an important way to sort of gain your soft skills because it allows you to, to, to interact with people, you know, joining extracurricular clubs. You can also learn from a mentor you know, or take some online courses and all of these opportunities where you can make connections with others and practice, okay? Okay, now career skills and professional development. I think this is related now to um, what one of the clansmen said, I think it was Afo, the Kenzo clan. I think it was Afo. <laughs> <laughs> and so career skills, professional development. This requires that we join a professional association to learn skills and network with the people in your industry. So if you want to go into pretty much any field right now has some sort of professional organization that you can join. So join a professional association or network. One of the most valuable things you can do is join one of those because most professions will have one, including associations, let's say that oversee the certification of a licensed profession. It might be something like engineering or nursing or a professional group that brings people from the same industry that may be unlicensed. It might be things like marketing together to, so that you can network. And that crosses, that crosses sort of, that cross professions are instead, let's say based on sectors, skills, gender, age, et cetera. So pretty much any, any any vocation that you want to take on, whether it is in finance, business, accounting, social work, psychology, coaching, there is some sort of membership organization that you can join. And the good thing about it is you benefit from insider, insider information. You can get people from your industry information that is really, really valuable. You can access career opportunities that if you weren't in that association, you would know nothing about. You can use that to gain mentors. So if you want to be a psychologist and you're in a psychology association, it's going to comprise of people who are entering the field as well as people who are established in the field. It's incumbent on you now to be like, hmm, I see Dr. So, so so and so who has his psychology practice. That's what I want. I'm going to approach him to be my mentor. And that's going to be that person's going to help you to open doors. Um, it'll give you updates in the field, the online events. And there you can develop your network of friends and you can have that information that other people don't. Um, yeah. Volunteer opportunities again. These, I cannot stress on how much it is. And I know that people in general tend not to like volunteer opportunities. Like, come on, I have a degree. I mean, I remember when I even had my degree, I was like, I'm not going to volunteer. What am I volunteering for? I have my degree now. Now I should be paid. You know, even when I got a master's, like, oh, now I should be paid. Right now, I would say maybe a quarter of my time in a week is spent on volunteer stuff. And it's through those volunteering opportunities that you meet people in a non-employment academic sphere they get to see the real you, you get to interact without the pressure of saying, oh my goodness, this is a job interview or something. And you get to show them your soft skills, you're dependable, you're trustworthy, you're responsible. So that when an opportunity comes, they're more likely to bring you along because they know you. 
when you present your CV and your cover letter, you are just a, a number. You are just a thing. Nobody knows. People lie on CVs and cover letters all the time. And they, you know what I mean? You have one year experience, you stretch it to two. You have six months, you stretch it to one year and that sort of thing. So if you are developing these relationships and people have experience of how you work, they would rather choose you because they know you, you're dependable. They know you know your stuff. And even if you don't know your stuff, they know you're willing to learn. They're more likely to bring you on board than this person that looks magnificent in a CV and cover letter. So yeah, volunteer opportunities, join social groups, Toastmasters. Has anybody heard of Toastmasters? So Toastmasters is like a social group that, that is tailored around helping people to develop their speaking, presentation skills. So if you're someone who is, let's say, shy, and you know that we've already established communication is important, you need to be able to communicate. Join something like Toastmasters for young people. And there's Toastmasters usually for adults who, let's say, people who are, but let's just say professionals, right? and 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 who want to learn speaking engagement blah 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 how to speak how to present how to look more confident how to have gravitas when you walk into the room so it's like as a black person you want to walk into the room and not for people to be like uh oh there's a black person but for you to walk in and you have this aura about you you have this gravitas that people are drawn towards you They're like i want to know who this person is you know they just look so confident and they know their stuff and something like toastmas is something that can help you as a young person and it's also a great networking tool rotary has anybody heard of rotary is, any, is anything in the chat am i um i don't think we got anything in the chat but i was going to say that rotary was one of our first sponsors like uh, we started with like one drum and they oh, gave wow. us our, like our first um a little grant to to buy different things yeah yeah rotary is thank you like it's all about social projects but it's also about networking it's also about networking you tend to find a lot of the movers and shakers in your city will probably be Rotarians. And there are groups like Rotaract, Interact, which are the younger versions of Rotary. And I think maybe there's a membership of like 80 bucks a year or 20 or 50 bucks a year or something like that. And there you get to work on community projects and you get connected to the, you know, the, 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 the Rotary, the bigger Rotarians and things like that. And that's building your social capital. So that when you want to enter doors, you're just like, hey, my mentor at Rotary, do you know so, 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 and so, 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 sure. And if you join any of these things, Toastmasters Rotary, put it in your CV, you'll be surprised who in that organization is a member. And because these organizations stand for, have certain values associated with them, if I'm, I'm a Rotarian, right? If I see someone put something in their CV that they're Rotarian, I'm more likely to hire them because I'm sure, because I know they have the values of a Rotarian. And so they have a four-way test. Hold on, let me just do a quick Google of it. One second. Any thoughts whilst, whilst, we're, whilst I'm talking? Any questions? Okay, no worries. So the rotary four-way test, for example, is it, the, is, is it the truth? Is it fact or concerned? Will it build goodwill and better relationships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? So if I see someone that is, says they're a Rotaract or an Interact, I'm more likely to, and I was hiring, I'm more likely to hire them because I know they stand for those values. And these opportunities for you, to, and in these, they have speaker series, leadership series, they'll talk about strategy, this, that, that, all sorts of opportunities, you know, in terms of speakers, all sorts of opportunities to work on community projects. And it is a place to network. And you can also explore things like Calgary Black Chambers. They have a, a, a mentorship component. For example, I was in a meeting with, I was part of a conference and I was like hosting the conference and, and John Cornish, who is right here, 
Can you see my cursor? Mm -hmm. This one. So Gon Cornish, I do you know, I think he used to be a footballer or something like that, right? Anyway, he used to be. Yeah, he's a big time Calgary stand player. He like had a yes. bunch of records and stuff, yeah. Exactly. So he used to be a, 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 I don't even know if it's football or what, but anyway, he used to be a, a, a popular, a popular athlete. And now he's transformed himself into a wealth management um, specialist. And he was also one of the founders of the Black Chambers. So before the conference, we met and I was like, how did you make this transformation? And he said, mentor. He said, I had a mentor who because because you're like, how do you move from football to wealth management? Like, it just seems like so different, right? He said, I had a mentor. And that mentor was able to say to him, John, do A, B, C, don't do F, don't do G, but do Z. Whereas if you don't have a mentor, you'll be A, B, C, and you can do a zigzag, whereas a mentor will just be like, just tell you, do, 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 do. And so... Connect with Toastmasters, Rotary, Black Chambers. Like if anybody's interested in Rotary or Black Chambers, I'm happy to sort of connect you with a Rotaract club or an Interact club or connect you with Black Chambers because they have a really good mentorship component. I don't know anybody, I probably, I don't know Toastmasters. But so these are opportunities for professional development and for you to network and for you to get out there and for people to know that you exist and for you to get your foot in the door. Once you get your foot in the door, you can then begin to rise. If your foot isn't in the door, you, it, it, you cannot rise. And remember we said yes the last time in that you need to have the right people in your boat. Any questions? And then the last one is Black North Initiative. So that's a new initiative that started, I think, following the, 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 the death of George the killing of George Floyd last year, and it was set up by a, a black Jamaican in Toronto. And so we just opened up a, a, an Alberta chapter and they have, they're looking at some youth projects and things like that. So I will probably be sending you stuff or sending Ike and Ashley stuff. So keep an eye out, you know, for stuff like that. But yeah, so join social groups. And it doesn't have to be a social group that is dominated by white people, they're black social groups. And if you want to have a bit of both, have a bit of both. It's all about building your capital. Um, what else? And of course, there are courses that you can take. Any questions? I'm kind of asking with hesitation. <laughs> but does that make sense? Like, give me a thumbs up. Let's try to get more people on camera. I know that. Um... A few of you, but Laura, we saw you come in, Felicia, Junior, Cristiano, Pamela. Oh, Pam's there. Okay, we're good. We want to see you guys. Hello, baby. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, hi. Oh, he's smiling. Oh. <laughs> I love this. So, yeah, back to that mental fist. Finding a mentor is really a key strategy for achieving professional success in Canada. So through mentorship, you can really gain first-hand knowledge of, low, of best practices and industry information. And um, yeah, what is your understanding of a mentor? I think I kind of give you part of the answer, but that's okay. You guys have always surprised me in terms of the wonderful stuff you come up with. What is your understanding of a mentor? Uh, let's go, Laura. Laura, I don't think we've heard you much today. Uh, like a mentor in general, like what is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so what I think a mentor is like someone who like who had experience back then and can like teach you like what he know what he or she knows, mm -hmm. like what to like understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what I that's what I think a mentor is. Is basically someone who like who had experience back then and uh, can teach you like the ways to like you know get better or something that uh, he or she learned back then and, uh, yeah that's what i think the mentors yeah 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 good good answer uh mm -hmm. maybe let's get an answer from i think vince or a junior i don't think we heard from you today how uh could you add to what uh lohan was saying yeah uh a mentor for me someone who guides you and like shows you 
like so you shows you the right way to do things you know like like there's different mentors for like different things you know mm, like point. mentors like even like we're talking about job aspects you know the ones that can show you like maybe if you never had a job you know they show you the process they help you build your resume and that mm. sort of thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you thank you yeah absolutely like look at these pictures here what does what does it does it say anything to you like does any yeah what do you understand I mean, they're pretty obvious, but I guess I just want um, engagement, I guess. Yeah, but how does it resonate for you, any of these pictures? <clears throat> um, I feel like it's like, uh, like for that one in the bottom right, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like uh, he's, he's basically growing the plant, you know, so he's, he's watering the plant. So that's basically like them, like, you know, like the plant being your brain mm -hmm. and like, they're kind of like, showing you like you know like and gaining knowledge from it so yeah. yeah that's great jr he's watering into you he's pouring into you so that you or we as an individual can grow and develop and be a better version of ourselves mm -hmm. yeah anybody else any of the pictures um i think uh like the top right one mm-hmm uh, it shows like someone uh, lifting someone up to their level. So it's just like, um, so you say implementing like their knowledge onto someone else, and you know, showing them the path. Like, yeah. like come here, like you know, so you, they can get to the level that they're at. Correct, correct. And that could look like opening doors, standing in front of you, right? So if there are blows coming, they're taking the blows, and not you, and opening the path for you making referrals. I have a wonderful mentor who like, who, who like mentor, like Rotary is like huge in Africa. It's huge, it's massive because obviously they do so many community projects and things like that. And I was recommended by someone to someone in Calgary who acted as my mentor in Rotary. And for me, the value that he brings for me, he, I've said this, it's almost like he is the umbrella. And he is like, it's raining and I don't feel any of the rain because he is like shielding me from all of the crap that's going on within the club. So people, I have people say, oh, the club is bureaucratic, the club is this, the club is that. I don't experience any of that. Because when I say, hey, I want to do this, he's like, okay, when, how, where, how can I help you? That's a mentor. Someone that will be like, how can I support you? What do you need? And that sort of thing. So they help you. They help clear the road for you. And they help to elevate you from where you are. Someone that says, you can do this. Don't give up. Almost that. Right? And who has a mentor outside of SOS Congo? Because I know Ike, Ashley, and Carolyn Papa and Denver and Lavi is everybody's mentor. But outside of SOS Congo, do you have a mentor? Okay, Pamela, you're nodding. Tell me about your mentor. He's like a Bible study mentor because okay. I have a really hard time um, reading the Bible or like knowing how to interpret it. So he's more of like a I guess, spiritual guide, I guess, because yeah. I need that. That's it. You can have mentors for different things. I like that. You can have your spiritual or religious uh, mentor. You can have your professional mentor. You can even have a few for each. You can have your personal mentor, someone who is just there to just support you through life, whether it's career, whether it's this, whether it's that, whether the other, and if you happen. And I spoke with somebody a couple of weeks ago and they were like, I would prefer a black mentor, somebody who has had a similar experience to myself. And I said, yeah, correct. But is that the only mentor you should have? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. And who says you can only have one mentor? Right? So you can have basically your mentor or mentors are people you will want to be like in the future. So whether it's that spiritual person, does that spiritual person need to be black? Maybe, maybe not. 
does your professional mentor need to be black? Maybe, maybe not. You have to make the decision. I'm not saying they should be. I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm saying you have to make the decision. Does your vocation mentor have to, you know, that sort of thing. So building your village. And remember, we gave, I gave the example of the canoe where in which you want the right people in the canoe, everyone's riding in the same, in, everyone is in the canoe and riding in the same direction and I'm motivating you to get to your destination. That's, that is what is important. But what would you say the benefits of having a mentor or mentors? I think we've mentioned some already, so throw them at me. not repeating uh, the same mistakes or um, uh, getting a, a quicker path to success. Yeah, not making the same mistakes. Your mentor probably, if he is somebody that you aspire to be like, whether it's spiritually, vocation, personally, whatever, he has likely made mistakes along the way. And so that person is there to say, mm, I rethink that move, mm, I or in Keri or La Vie or Afo or Tutu, you know, Christiana, you know, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I, what else? Um, we have Christiana here saying, um, not having to navigate unfamiliar grounds blindly. That's in the chat. Yeah. But, and I yeah, think, I'm, have, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, that's correct. Not having to, 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 to navigate unfamiliar grounds blindly and alone in yeah. the sense they can be the people that will actually help to open doors and be like, okay, Christiana, you can go. Yeah, Why and is then oh, yeah, Pamela yeah. here saying, if you want to be a mentor, oh, sorry. Uh, if you want to be a mentor yourself, you can learn leadership skills from your mentor. For example, how to deal with things, how to talk to people, that's great. Uh, Tutu Nafo, how about you praise me? I'm a pretty great mentor. Tell them all the great ways I mentor. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, let's go maybe uh, uh, to, to Felicia. Let's grab Felicia's opinion and perspective here. We haven't heard too much of you. Um, oh, hi, I, welcome. I think I'm more of Apple's mentor than you are. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I definitely think mentors are good. I've I have people that I I go to to help me um, even navigate like my my career and like there's some job opportunities again that's happening at my work. So I've I've talked to some people to kind of ask them what what their opinion is or what they think. So it's good. It's like you don't know everything, and it takes a like it takes a village to to raise people up, right? So. I just think that it's mentors are just great so that you can get a second opinion and especially if someone who's been there, someone who's gone through it, they have the knowledge and they can even share with you their processes or so you don't make Absolutely. mistakes maybe that they have made. So, yeah. Absolutely. I love that, Felicia. I love that because for as long as we are, we are human, we are bound to make mistakes. And sometimes we'll make them at work. And if you don't have mentors, you're not quite sure what the best way is to, to, to navigate. Whereas a mentor or mentors will be like, you know, okay, fine. Yes, you made that mistake to, to Aries is human. But now how do we correct? How do we fix it? How do we move forward? What's that course correction? And sometimes when you've made that mistake, you are so engrossed in that feeling and stress and fear and frustration you need the mentor sometimes to be like okay relax it's okay i made this mistake my mistake was even worse look at me now this is what i suggest that you do but it doesn't mean that you have to take everything they say to a t but this is why it's important for you to be it's important for you to choose the right mentor just like that boat you need the right person in your boat and a mentor you know, can really help foster understanding of your field where you're working, the context of the profession, the workplace culture that Papa and Demba, La Vie and, and Ike were talking about, you know, which young people, specifically those from diverse countries and backgrounds may not be familiar with. So this knowledge is really a critical step on the road to, success, to career success. Mentoring can also help expand one's um, professional network 
in that if you have a mentor, they're invested in you, they want to see you grow. And so they would be, so if you needed something, yes, a connection, they would, they should be, so it doesn't mean they all will be. So I have to be careful who you choose, but they should be okay with facilitating connections for you. And um, yeah, so to facilitate this type of benefit, it really requires intentional nurturing and you need to make sure you have the right presence mentoring you. So what do you look for in your mentor? What are the important characteristics you look for in your mentor? Because if you want this perfect ideal of a mentor, and bearing in mind your mentor is also human, so they may mis make mistakes too. They may piss you off. They may say something you don't like, okay? But what are you looking for in a mentor? And what are the characteristics? Yeah, what are characteristics you're looking for in a mentor? Because it's important to know that because if you know what you're looking for, you'll know when you found it, as opposed to just looking for anybody. Lavi, are you trying to say something? Availability, the mentor need to be available, need to be honest with me, should not be a cheerleader. Um, yeah. Those two. Yeah, availability, honesty, but also a cheerleader. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. You don't want a mentor that's going to be like, oh, I can see you once every three months. <laughs> and Fisher's in the chat, Fisher said experience. Experience, yeah, yeah. And honesty, you want somebody who is going to be honest with you. They're not just going to, you know, like my dad says, blow smoke up your ass. Excuse my French. You know, they're going to be honest with you. They're going to keep you accountable, but they're also your cheerleader. You can be honest and be someone's cheerleader at the same time. And and Felicia said experience, yeah. You need somebody who has experience in the direction in which you want to go. So if it's a spiritual mentor, they have experience in that. You're not going to find... I mean, there is such a thing as peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, but here we're not talking about peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. If you're looking for that mentorship that's going to do these three things in this picture, you need somebody who has experience. So if you want to grow spiritually, you're going to find somebody who you feel, I mean, everybody has room for growth, but at least is at a higher spirituality than you. Not that you know necessarily, but you assume, I guess, based on, let's say, the role they play and that sort of thing. So yeah, thanks, Felicia. That's a great one. Experience. And Christiana has her hand up. Yeah, Christiana. Um, I was going to add someone with a, a growth mindset as opposed to a mindset of lack or a fixed mindset. Ooh, yes. You want, oh, yes. I love that. You need somebody who, who has a growth mindset who is going to push you to be better than where you are as opposed to someone who's going to be like, yes, the world is crap, the world is crap. Yes, everything is wrong with the world. You know, this is just how it is. You know, hang in there. <laughs> you want someone who is going to say, yes, this is happening. Yes, this is true. What, what is, you know, you have the control to respond. You have the ability to choose how you respond. How are you going to respond? And how are you going to grow beyond this point? Love it. One more. A listener. A listener. Yeah, absolutely. A listener. Correct. Correct. And how do you, thank you, Papa Demon. And so how, so now that we kind of have a good idea in terms of what we're looking for in a mentor, how do we ensure that we get the most out of this, these mentorship relationships? We're likely going to go over a little bit, so hope you don't have to go but please stay if you have if you can please stay because it's really cool but I won't take it too far beyond the 12 o'clock but um yeah so um um how do you how do you ensure that you get the most out of your mentorship relationship um Jimima has her hand up hello hi hi Jimima go ahead um, so I was just going to say that in order for it to actually work, you'd have to put in most of, I feel like you'd have to put in most of the work. You have um, to put in most of the work, you say? Yeah, kind of, yeah, basically. Because um, if you're not like being honest with yourself and being honest with what you're doing on your side, and like you're not understanding what you're doing or how you're going about things, and you can't voice that to your mentor, then like nothing's gonna work like yeah they're professionals and stuff like that but if you can't 
know the right and wrongs and what you're doing with fun and stuff like that, then it's not fun at work. So that's why I'm saying that um, in order for for you to get the most out of it, you have to basically put in all of the work to better yourself because at the end of the day, you know yourself better than anyone else. Absolutely. You have to put in the work. You have to put, it. it's not just down to the mentor. It's a symbiotic relationship. You have to put in the work too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? How do you ensure that you get the most out of your mentorship relationship? Can I emphasize on one of the things Jamima just spoke about, which is uh, knowing what you, I'll put it that way, know what you want from the mentor. Because the mentor is not going to come to dictate you, this is what I know, I know, and you should take it. No, he is coming to answer to your needs, you know, uh, right. address your needs. So knowing what you want and address it clearly with the mentor gives him the platform and the authority to be quick to you. What they know. For example, I've been studying cybersecurity for a few months now not that technical. So I had this friend of mine who is a doctor in cybersecurity. He teaches also in some of few universities in, in Africa, but he's here. So he's been visiting me. He offered himself to mentor me, but I did not really get the most of what he, he was teaching me because he was giving me what he thought I knew. I had to, to, to formulate clearly, this is what I want. I don't want, I don't need theories. I want to be technical because I'm not. So mm -hmm. let me dress, a, no, do uh, a calendar and the, the, um, the themes of the, the yeah, wh whatever we'll be talking about. Okay, that's good. I dressed, um, draw, a, drew a calendar and uh, my needs, based on that, he was, he was giving me really what I wanted. When we meet already, we know what we'll be talking about. Okay, there's no theory here. Uh, there, there's no theories today. Open your laptop download this program, install it. This is how you use it. Papa, pa, pa, he demo demonstrated a few examples. Okay, you act on it. I'll work on it for three weeks. We'll get back, I'll come and assess. And that's what we'll be uh, working with him. So knowing what you want, voice it out, will give the, your mentor the authority to work with you what they know also. Absolutely, absolutely. You need to know what you want. You need to absolutely know what you want from that mentor. Do you want them to open, make referrals? Do you want them to coach you? Do you want them to invite you to events? Mm -hmm. You want them to, let's say, look for volunteering opportunities, mm -hmm. look for a job. It might be all of that, but you tell him because if he doesn't know, he can't help you. So it might be all of those things. You're like, hey, I want it all. <laughs> And if you want it all, you let him know you want it all. Absolutely. But you also have to be open to new ideas because if the mentor is somebody that, let's say, is where you want to be, he may have ideas about things that you, you don't, that things, like I like this saying, sometimes you don't even know what you don't know. And if you don't know what you don't know, then you, there has to be some openness as well to sort of, um, um, to his new, him or hers or theirs or theirs new idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Last one. Oh. Last one. How do you and how do you ensure that you are getting the most out of your relationship, your mentorship relationship? There's one thing I'm looking for that hasn't been said yet. mutualism it has to be a give and take relationship so if you have a mentor who is doing all of the pouring fine you may not be able to pour back but how, what can you do to give back there has to be a reciprocal benefit yes you may have a mentor who he just enjoys seeing you grow yeah he may absolutely enjoy seeing and that in itself is enough but we as human beings human nature we also like to be shown appreciation somehow we also like relationships to be reciprocal and it's more likely that your relationship will be long term if it's reciprocal 
as opposed to, okay, I'm going to mentor this person for one year or six months. If it's reciprocal, it can last years. It can last decades. And if you build roots with that person, that person will root for you in a way that you would be like, well, damn, even my family members don't even root for me in this way. So it has to be reciprocal. I'll give you an example. So one of my mentors, for example, um, every time there's an, an occasion, not occasion, like a, 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 a something happened in the calendar, Christmas, Easter. And that's the interesting thing. Easter, I made them a big, massive pot of Sierra Leonean food, couscous, lamb, this, that, like five different bowls I made like for three of my mentors and I went to deliver it. They're like, oh, Sierra Leonean food is so delicious. Da, 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 da. It didn't really take much out of me but they appreciate it. And, and he has a business, his business is doing okay, but I found for him three volunteers, interestingly, Lavi from, from, from Siwa, from Siwa, who worked on his reconciliations. That saved him thousands of dollars. He had three volunteers over a period of four months. It took nothing out of me. It was just a phone call and, and interviews, four hours of my time saved him thousands of dollars. So to maintain that reciprocal relationship, you also have to think about what can you do for that mentor? Some people are like, oh, he has everything. He knows everything. There's no, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a birthday card, a Christmas card, but it has to be reciprocal for it to last. Anybody disagree or thinking, yeah, I don't think so. I absolutely agree with you, Kathy. I think um, that's where a lot of mentorships uh, die because it's always, uh, some people approach mentorship as what can I get out of this? And it's always about what you can get out of it and not what you can also give the other person. If you're not able to give the other person anything at all, it's very difficult to maintain that relationship when you just come to get, to get, to get. Exactly, exactly. And it can get so exhausting. And mm -hmm. guess what? For somebody who, you think, you may think he has everything or she has everything or they or they have everything, but that one token, he will remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Papa Nembe, I agree. No, no, I would say it is a very, uh, very wise, I mean, uh, uh, advice that you have given there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, to me, I will say that this, uh, uh, it will take, the person will take you really serious and then also is a, I mean, it expresses a, a lot because like uh, we did this with our medical uh, fund. One time did that and the, the way you were just uh, a cup, I mean, um, something is very small. But it was uh, thoughtful to the uh, to the point that uh, she got an encouragement uh, to to do what uh, she's doing, and also takes you seriously. That, uh, yeah, you are somebody who can be responsible. It may, it, it expresses that uh, you are responsible mm -hmm. uh, to the other side. It doesn't matter what you you, but uh, that just is very very important. Yeah. 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 And it I was shows gonna add, uh, Kathy. I think it'd yes. be useful to maybe uh, give some ideas to of yeah some general ideas of things to do because I, I, I do it especially when you're you're um, not as experienced and you're working with a mentor who is always you tend to feel like you have nothing to give and yeah. so I think yeah. it's, it's nice to uh, give some ideas of yes you do have something to give and oh, these are yeah, some of the yeah, ideas yeah. of what you can give because I think a lot of people get stumped on on that and they think no I, I have nothing I am not that experienced I don't um, I, I don't have much to offer this person and that's a, that's no, no. a detriment and so just having ideas for people like oh you could do this you could do that it would be very helpful yeah, I mean, I have some, I'll give you examples of some stuff I've done, but then I think I'll throw it out there as well, you know, just for you all to sort of say, well, how else do you think you could sort of give back to the mentor? So for me, like um, when I first moved to Calgary, I used to work at Mac, okay? And so we used to like get a whole bunch of free lipsticks and stuff like that. 
and I have a mentor who's a woman. And every time I'd get given a free Mac product, I find something, you know, they'll be like, okay, you know, like, you know, Mac for, for, for the men out there, like, that, that's sexist, but okay, doesn't matter. But for the men out there, like Mac has, you know, different shades for light, dark, blah, blah, blah. So I will always choose the free item that was closest to her shade or her skin tone. And I would take it, package it and give it to her and say, thank you so much for being a great mentor. It didn't cost me a dime, but guess what? When she looks on the Mac website, that thing was 50 bucks. <laughs> that lipstick is $20, right? And so there are ways in which you can be creative, you know, and I also like, like I say, I cook, you know, doing like different special events, Christmas, this is that, I send it to them. There's that, C, you know, the CEO volunteers where I found three volunteers for my mentor's organization. He ended up hiring one of them to a full-time senior accountant position. So he, so that there, he's like, she values this relationship. Because I found- You must like, be a good cook. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> can, I, can I invite myself? Sure, when the pandemic <laughs> is over, I think we should all have something. I definitely agree with you, Papa and Demi, for sure. For sure, yeah. And um, what else do I do? What else? And also, I do like little notes. Like, I'll just send random emails. So I'll be like, thank you so much. Some people are like, ah, oh, stop brown nosing. You're not brown nosing. If someone has supported you and they have helped you and opened doors for you, you have to reciprocate. You know, I'd send them notes, thank you so much for being a great mentor. I really appreciate our relationship. My mentors have given me opportunities, jobs. They have given me references. The times when I have proposals, they'll be like, run that proposal by me. Let me look at it. They'll give me feedback. They'll say, do a presentation. They'll give me feedback. You know, things that money can't buy. And so I'll turn it out there to you. Or what else, how else do you think that you can support, well, give back to your mentor? What skill do you have? Are you, I don't know, are you, are you an artist? You know, I see these arts being done on Instagram when somebody will just grab some clay and do some circles and spray it. And it looks wonderful. It takes like 20 minutes to do. Are you an artist? Do some arts and give it to them. They would probably pay hundreds of dollars for it, but you you probably cost you five bucks to buy the clay, the gold spray and the spatula to, and <laughs> to create something. So yeah, how else can you give back to your mentor? And then I'll try and whiz through the rest of the stuff. I, I think uh, even giving your time, uh, being able to, um, if your mentor has a project that they tell, they told you about, they're working on, you can be able to give your time um, to even volunteer on yourself to do some of the work. And it, not only does it help them, but it also helps you to um, refine your skills. Uh, you absolutely. absolutely. I don't think there is a being on this world that wouldn't want free help. Everybody likes free. <laughs> and so give of yourself and say, hey, these are my skills. I notice you're doing a project and so, 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 and so. Can I assist you? And don't say, how can I assist you? Make recommendations as to how you can assist and what value you can add. Um, to piggyback off what uh, Carol was saying, maybe to say, like, you become a mentor yourself, but it was that added? already to the, the group, like pass it forward, like find somebody else, get the information uh, that was like imparted onto you and then you give it to somebody else. Exactly, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's it, become a mentor yourself and you're not too young to be mentors. There are people who might be 12, 10, nine, eight. You're not too young to be mentors. And we're trying to stand up our mentorship program, guys. So definitely soak this all up. We're going to be having our mentorship meeting starting soon. Yeah, yeah. And so when it comes to like choosing that mentor, look for someone who's going to motivate you, someone who's going to provide advice, someone who's going to help you to be successful, someone who's going to provide direction, someone who's going to provide coaching, support, 
you know, training and help you work towards your goal. And you have to commit to each other. It's not just them committing to you. You have to commit to each other. Develop trust, plan your goals, roles and responsibilities, collaborate results. For me, before I see my mentor, I send him an agenda beforehand so he knows what we're gonna be talking about. And there are a few projects he has me working on. I give him an update on my projects. It's incumbent on you to say, hey, I'd like to meet with you every two weeks. You set up your meetings every two weeks, you know, in the calendar. So you don't have to remind you, don't, she doesn't have to remind you, hey, I've not seen you in a couple of months. What's going on? No, no, no. You set those calendar invites, you have your, you know, and you really commit to each other and prioritize it. But that's, that's when you found a good one or good ones. So which is why you have to be cautious and careful about who you choose because you're going to be investing in each other's lives. Okay. Okay, so mentor specific skills. So things like instructing, developing capabilities, inspiring, providing corrective feedback, managing risks, which um, I think um, I spoke about. I, it's so funny. I keep saying, because you have SOS signed in, I keep wanting to say SOS Congo. <laughs> uh, managing risks, so these are the mistakes and things like that, opening doors. Mentee specific skills, acquiring mentors, um, learning quickly, showing initiative, following through. Oh, if you say you're going to do it, you do it. If you can't do it, you let him, know, him or her know before the deadline. Say, hey, I know I've committed to this, but unfortunately this has come up. I'm going to um, please give me another three days or another one week and I'll have it completed. Thanks for your understanding. Uh, most people will be like, fine, sure. But if, they, if they're expecting it, they've allocated time, let's say to read it or to listen to you and then you just don't show up. <clears throat> I had to terminate a, 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 a mentorship relationship I had when someone missed our meetings twice and didn't even have the courtesy to tell me and I was like okay I'm done I, I'm too busy <laughs> and um yeah so following through managing the relationship and then for both parties listening actively building trust encouraging and identifying goals and current reality okay future proof your skills so sought after so, um, um sought after technological and transferable skills that will keep you competitive this is back to Lavi's point which is really looking at what do you think the future is going to need? Or how can I make sure that whatever decision I make, I'm future proofing it, if that makes sense. And we all know technology, AI, and all that good stuff, you know, see how you can incorporate it. And it's being incorporated everywhere. Everything is becoming smart, smart water bottle, smart lamp everything is smart you know you see even within the medical profession you have all these machines and things like that nobody's saying you should go and invent a machine unless you're an inventor but have some understanding of what the different approaches are and the new different systems and the new different things so that as technology is advancing it's not leaving you behind and be innovative and flexible in the sense that um yeah, be innovative. There's no box. You're flexible. If in the event you find that your career is, let's say, not as demand, is not in demand or is not as well sought after as it used to be, you have to be flexible to be say, well, maybe I need to do a few more courses, or maybe I need to do this. And like I said earlier, gone are the days where if you want to do marketing, you have to do a whole degree or a whole a whole um, 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 certificate. In marketing, now you can go do one course, two courses. If you want to specify and let's say search engine optimization, you do a course in search engine optimization and that's it, you're good to go. Um, tech savvy, willingness to reskill and upskill and deep work. What do you understand by deep work? So deep work is actually the name of a book that I'm currently reading. It's by Carl Newport, if you have time read it, he talks about designate, like designating time every single day for focused, uninterrupted work. Many of us were doing work, LinkedIn is in the background, Instagram is in the background, the notifications are coming in on my computer, my phone, you know, you're sort of checking as you're writing, you're checking as you're doing, you're checking, and you are distracted 
the whole day, all day long. Your emails are coming through, you know, and that sort of thing. So deep work is turning everything off. If you don't apply to some, reply to someone for three, four hours, I doubt it will be catastrophic. Um, um, turning everything off and focusing concentrated time for three, four work to hone in on your skill because you can find yourself spending four, three, four hours a day checking your emails and doing all sorts of stuff. But if you designated three, four hours a day, let's say to something like writing a book, you could be done in three months. But if you don't, you won't write that book. And so really doing deep work to hone in your skills. So if you want to be a psychologist, you spend time to understand the difference. I don't know what psychologists do, but let's say, you know, to understand what the skills are, what the approaches are, what the, what the, the, the best practice is, so that you become the best person in that field. So it becomes completely unquestionable as do we hire you versus someone else. So deep work is one way to sort of future proof yourself and work-life balance. I'm still struggling with that. God help me. But um, you know, finding work-life balance where you have time to rest, your body, your brain, your mind, everything needs to, to, to shut down and have time to regenerate. So you know, having work-life balance is really important. And I'm gonna, I have here strategies for resumes and cover letters, and these are important, but I think most of you are in some sort of an institution, whether it's in school or university, where there is a career service. So I'm gonna whiz through it because I think you already have access to that. Um, Katie. Um, yes, sir. Could we save maybe some of this for um, uh, like, do some of it in the next session. I have another presentation really oh, yeah. soon oh, okay. that Ash and I have to, I sent you a little note, but you were in the midst of your presentation there. So I'm thinking- Let me, is, let me just what I can just finish. Sorry, carry on. Yep, yeah, carry yeah, on. It, could, could we wrap up in like five-ish yep. minutes? Is that possible? Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Sorry about that. No, 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 it's not a problem. It's not a problem. So one thing I want us to just go through quickly, 80-20 rule question. Only 20% of the jobs out there are being advertised, true or false? Sorry, only 20% of the jobs out there are being advertised, true or false? True. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say true. Okay, who thinks false? Okay, so put your, your like, do, give me your thumbs up or thumbs down. True, false, thumbs up, false, thumbs down. I think I just said the same thing twice, okay. Okay, let me see, are there any thumbs downs, thumb downs? Okay, I don't think so. Okay, so true. Yeah, you're correct. What does that tell you? If only 20% of the jobs out there are being advertised, what does this tell you? Most of the jobs are obtained through connections. Yeah, that could be one, that could be one, yes. Yeah. But this also means that many of us are spending 100% of our time to find 20% of the jobs. And even out of that 20%, a big chunk, they already know who they're gonna hire. And we're not competing with the whole of Canada, which is fine. If you are the best, you are the best and you will soar and you will rise above the rest. But for most people who aren't necessarily the best of the best of the best of the best, <laughs> um, how do we access the remaining other jobs? So if only 20% are being advertised and 80% are sort of internally and in referrals, how do we access those? Think about some of the things we've been mentioning already. How do we access the remaining 80%? We need maybe to acquire the necessary skills. Skills, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, how are they, what, yeah, Ooh, sorry, someone was gonna say something. Oh, I said networking, sorry. Networking, yeah. Networking, if these jobs aren't being advertised, you need to go out there and find them. And you do that through things like networking. Yeah. Yeah, one more. And this is where obviously your mentors coming in that. Yeah, and so networking, 
is really important. Um, so it's really all about building connection and credibility. So you could have, so it's all about building your skills, building your qualifications, getting all the training that you require. But guess what? If you have all of that, but all you're doing is applying for jobs, you won't access the rest of them. So yes, you need to build yourself as a person, but then now you need to take yourself out there so people know what you have and can give you the jobs that you actually want so that you can actually access the jobs that you want. Yeah, I didn't catch this in the chat, but Pamela actually said that you have to put yourself out there. Uh, so yeah. she, she caught that. Yeah. Absolutely, you need to put yourself out there. So networking is a powerful tool that can help us young people sort of access relevant career opportunities, um, things like informal meetings. Um, you can, if you find somebody, you start with low hanging fruit. You have more people in your circle than you know, and there's always that six degree of, 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 of separation. So if you are want to be, uh, let's go with psychologist again. You want to be a psychologist. You're like, hey, I, do you know anybody who's, in, who's a psychologist? I could be like, hmm, yeah, I do. I'll connect you with a psychologist. And, I, and that psychologist, you'd be like, okay, well, how did you get there? What did you do? How did you get there? Uh, what steps did you take? Let me know if there are any volunteering opportunities. Let me know if you hear of any jobs. Informal meetings. You can contact me too. You can contact Carol. You can contact me. And that sort of thing. Informal meetings, um, they sort of build, it's an opportunity to sort of create these authentic kind of connections that may not be possible in a, let's say, formal recruitment setting. In an interview, hiring managers have a different lens, of judging someone and trying to make a decision whether to proceed or not. Whereas if you're meeting in a, in a networking, in an informal and informational interview or informational meeting, there is that pressure taken out of it. I have had lots of opportunities from just informational interviews. And um, yeah, so like I was saying, start with the low hanging fruit. You have more, more capital than you probably realize. Networking events, again, volunteering your, your, your mentors again. And so this is important because you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I think we can stop there. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll try and connect um, out of it. But quickly, just before we go, did anybody learn anything new or is there an increased awareness about anything today? Yeah, I think I think the end right there, like where you were saying about the 80-20 thing, like I didn't know that this whole time. Like I was, I've been applying to jobs like online and on like Indeed and all that. And I didn't know that like most of the jobs are actually not, not even advertised. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? One more to me and then we can close. I learned a lot about mentorship. That's for sure. <laughs> I didn't know any of the clubs that you mentioned before either. So that's way new for me as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you don't remember, so Toastmasters, Rotary, uh, yes. Black Chambers, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, one more and then we can close. One more. You have increased awareness about anything, even if you don't, even if you didn't learn anything new necessarily. Uh, oh, soft anything. skills? Yeah, what about soft skills like? Uh, me, myself, like, um, I, like how different people navigate them or uh or or what it means for for different people i think that was quite enlightening for me okay awesome awesome okay well i think oh and papa and said oh i think you said that already. you have to push yourself out there yeah yeah and so there are a few things i wanted to to do so we will probably do that maybe in the first 20 minutes of our next session to finish that off and then we will start the new item next week as on the 27th and so Thank you all. I really appreciate you staying. I see everybody stayed. I really appreciate it. I hope you found it. Um, thank you, Lavi. Um, I hope you found it useful and valuable. And again, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about anything. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, Nketi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll see you later, guys. Look out Bye. for our session next Thursday. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye. See ya.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.